I'm Sybil Todd, and I am the face behind White Knight Cosplay. Tell me how that started. <laughs> well, actually, uh, so I was already involved in theater and had been making costumes for theater. Tell me for about years. your involvement in theater. What kind of involvement? Were you I had? started in high school, uh, theater kid. Yeah, no. Um, so I started um, drama in high school and just had a love for it immediately. Loved all aspects of it. So I did. Um, I was on stage, but I was working behind the scenes. I already knew how to sew, so it was a logical step to start doing some costuming. Um, so I just everything about the theater I loved. And uh, how did so, you yeah. learn to sew? My mom taught me uh, when I was about eight. We started sewing, and I grew up in farm country, and everyone knew how to sew when you were a girl. So um, that's how I learned, and I just kept kept playing with it and doing, you know, kind of went past what my mom knew, and just kept, you know, expanding my skills and um, just, you know, loved creating. And so I don't know if I love love the actual process of sewing, but I love the ability to create something with it. So and the result of it. Mm -hmm. you, well, yeah. did you have any idea when you were in drama early that you would one day be doing? This kind of stuff? I had no idea. <laughs> so I went to college. I actually got a scholarship to college in drama. Never took a drama class. Where did you go to college? Uh, University of Central Florida. Um, and go Knights, which is funny. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so I, yeah, I never took a drama class. I went hardcore into science. Uh, got my degree in physical therapy um, and worked with special needs kids for years. And then became a mom and retired from that and started homeschooling. And so that, you know, we started doing cosplay as a family and the the rest just kind of evolved from that. So when did you become familiar with cosplay as, as a thing? So my husband loves comic books. He's a comic book collector, um, you know, old school. And we went to our first convention. So we heard about these comic book conventions. I was like, honey, let's let's go check this out. And he's one of those. He's, you know, if you've seen Big Bang Theory, you know, it's like, got it, got it, got it, got it. That's my husband. And I have the attention span of a gnat. And so I'm like, and I'm bored, you know. So he's over there going through every comic book box in the entire convention. And um, I was like, and what else is there? <laughs> because I can't do this for six hours. And I, I saw these people in comic Costumes. And I was like, what is this? And so I went and talked to some people and found out about this wonderful world called cosplay. Um, and this was 12 or 13 years ago. So this is, cosplay is not as well known at that time. So it was kind of a, a newer, th newer thing. Like a lot of people were like, it's a what? You know, uh, <laughs> you know thinking it's something, you know, a little, you know, toward. But um, yeah, so I, I saw these costumes and I was like, well, I know how to sew. And my kids were little at the time. They were, I think my youngest one was maybe three. And we just, I thought it would be something fun that we could do as a family while my husband was flipping. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we just started doing that. Um, we, I think our second year doing it, we decided to enter a contest and uh, we won. And I thought, well, let's just do this thing. And so on the way home from that, I created um, a, one of the teenage kids at my, you know, one of my, my teenage kids, uh, friends created my Instagram account and White Knight was born. So what were your yeah. first costumes that you did? Oh gosh. Um, I started with superheroes primarily. Um, I was, Cosplay came at a good time. I was it was kind of a a dark patch, I guess, for me. Um, and I needed I needed to feel like the hero again. You know, I needed to find the hero within myself. And so I started doing uh, a lot of superhero costumes. Um, Lady Thor was one of my first ones, which she's right back there. Um, and so I needed these heroic characters that I could kind of channel that for myself. And so you know, standing here is. There's actually there's a study done on on the power of this position um, and that it's you know builds confidence and it changes some of the, some of the uh, chemistry in your body to give you this this boldness, and so I started being these superheroes and uh, ended up working on a volunteer superhero team down in Georgia, for about five years and then later started our own team up here, and uh, it's very empowering you know to 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 enact that character and kind of find some of those qualities within yourself, and so that's uh, you know that's a part of the journey of what what we get to do. And you kind of got into it during the golden age of women superheroes, too. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I've done uh, Phoenix is one of my favorites uh, from X-Men. Um, what actually, when you asked what my first costume was, uh, we did a Doctor Who family group and I was the TARDIS. Was a dress, um, and then Miss Mask was my other first one. It was atrocious. I saved the costume only because it was so bad. <laughs> like it's one of those. Look how far I've come. Um, but it was a it was a character from the 1940s. Like it's a very unknown one. And I just stumbled across her, and she had a red fedora, which is what sold me on it. And uh, so that was one of my first costumes. It's it's absolutely hideous though. It's really it's really bad. So we don't bring her out anymore. <laughs>
<laughs> but um, but that's I mean that's part of the cosplay journey is growth and and you know improving your skills and you know getting to look back and go wow look at look at all the good things I can accomplish now you know and it's and again it's an empowerment thing to to gain in in cosplays wildly expansive like you can do sewing which is my primary um my primary medium that i work in but there's foam work which is what um the lady thor is all made out of uh, craft foam um there's people that work in leather which is what she's made out of <laughs> she they just happen to be right here uh, on display for me um the, you know there's people that work with metal there's i mean you can work in all i mean i've seen a complete costume out of cardboard which was amazing um there's 3d printing now there's like all kinds of laser stuff you, laser cutters you can use like the it depends on what your what your interest is or your skill set is that you can really just delve into that and you don't have to know how to sew or you don't know how, you know like you can kind of take what your skill set is and run with it and create this magic and you mentioned lady phoenix are there others other than phoenix and and who, oh, are, yeah. who are your favorites oh. <laughs> just among your yeah. favorites phoenix we'll is my favorite because i you know i grew up loving the x-men so you read comic um, books growing up too? Yeah, a little bit. Not as much as my husband. Um, I read a little bit, and then, you know, a lot of the TV shows at that time, you know, I'm an 80s kid, so um, a lot of the TV shows were, you know, Spider-Man and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then when, you know, I was in high school when the first Batman trilogy came out, and you know, all of us that were comic book fans were like, oh, and it's, it's atrocious, obviously, but um, it was so perfect in the comics. Like, it was, it really brought the, the, ca the campiness of the comics to life in a fun way, so... Um, you know, that was, I remember being in high school and like, oh, they put it on screen, like, this is big. So that was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, um, you know, Marvel has taken off and done a much well, you, better job over the years. Before you get away from Batman, you were Bat, you Batgirl, you do Batgirl too, right? I do Batgirl, yeah, that's one of the primary ones I do now. Um, I've, I've played around with most of the female superheroes um, over time, so um, I did Captain Marvel for a long time. Um, I've done, like, Spider-Gwen and things like that, so... And it's not just comic books, it's, it's things No, from, yeah. no, we, um, well, that's actually how I ended up starting my entertainment company, is we'd been sewing for a decade and some, and the costumes accumulate, so we have well over 200 plus costumes just laying around, and, I th and uh, I'd already been, people were asking me to do a lot of performances in character, so Miss Frizzle is one of my big ones, um, I teach, uh, I've taught at some of the... Remind people who that is. Uh, Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus, um, and she is... <laughs> Um, she's one of my favorite characters always, um, and recently I just found out that uh, there's a there's a whole storyline where she goes back in time and she like gets in medieval battles with with a sword and chainmail, and I was like, she's even cooler than I think she used to be. But um, yeah, so I, I loved those stories, and my kids found that for the library and school groups and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. So it started. This is how the whole performance part of cosplay started for me. Was um, I was doing, you know, working with this with a volunteer superhero team where we, you know, go into hospitals and, and visit kids and things. Um, but I hit, my kids were joking that when I take them on field trips because I'm a homeschool mom, um, they said you're just like Miss Frizzle. Like these are the craziest schools, you know field trips we do. And so jokingly, I made a Miss Frizzle dress and you know got the wig and and po posted posted it on my page. And people were like, Well, do you do bookings? Like, would you come to our school and teach? And I'm a teacher by nature, and so I love science and I love art. And so I thought, Well, I'll put put together a show. So I started doing some work for um, some daycares and school districts, and then the library, you know, gets me to do a tour during the summer um, to, for. To, to match the theme of their summer program and it just took off and then people were like well do you do other characters and you know it evolved from there my kids were have been doing this since they could walk and so they were you know they're all theater kids and so we kind of made it a family affair and then other families joined us and it became a whole thing and so um, that's kind of how the birth of white knight entertainment happened was this we were kind of doing this and I was like well let's just make it official and you know separate it a little bit from the cosplay you know part of the world um, and that's you know what I've been doing for for the, this almost a year now um, and it's been a really cool adventure and so we have like 30 people on our team now and um, well, how do you put together when you started putting it together for the family to do it together as a family how did you figure out how to do that I mean well the, I mean kids are so creative so they were like well, let's do let's try and so they were all in like it's it was just Halloween every day of the year for us and so um, you know every kid loves Halloween oh, but wow, we just but do it all the time. Halloween is the best <laughs> ever you know it's funny Halloween we're like I have nothing to wear you know? so, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Halloween's actually our most challenging day because we, we have, because you can't do like the big elaborate things for, you know, most Halloween events. So you have to scale it down. It's like you do your meh costumes for Halloween. But um, yeah, the kids were all in. They love it. Um, all my kids know how to sew. Um, I've got several of them are artists. And so they, they have different aspects of the, like I said, there's so many, you know, a, a, parts of it. My husband does a lot of the foam work. He does a lot of the 3D printing. Um, one of my sons is incredibly artistic. And so we recently just made a dragon uh, for the Ren Fair. It's a 30-foot puppeted 
Flying Dragon, and he did uh, a lot of the design of the. We, we hand painted the entire body with all the scales and everything, and that was his design. He, you know, he ran that. Um, so yeah, it's it's a whole team of creatives in this family, and um, we just we kind of lean on each other and you know put in our different talents and create this this uh, magical world we live in. Now, your kids and husband, do they have favorite characters they like to do? My husband's favorite is Batman. So um, on the superhero team, and he dresses up too. So I, I said you know he does a lot of the comic stuff, but he also jumps in and dresses up. He's he's a wonderful man. I've seen you on a lot of events. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he he uh, I don't know. I'd say begrudgingly, but. You know, he's not as all in as the rest of us, but no, he does. Um, he did Wolverine for years, um, but his long goal was to get Batman. And we just brought Batman uh, in this past year. So he's excited about that. Um, and one of my sons, he does Spider-Man primarily. Um, although he's looking to expand now, he's been doing Spider-Man for like six years. And he's like, you know, could I show my face at some point? <laughs> so we're allowing him to unmask this year and do some new characters. Um, and then my other son, he does uh, Captain America primarily. Um, and then my daughter, she does kind of everything she can get her hands on. So she's a little bit like her mom where she, she's like, I do all the costumes. <laughs> so, and then she does a lot of princesses as well. So a lot of Disney princesses. And we just mentioned a minute ago, it's not just comic books, it's novels and is it literature and all sorts of characters. It can be anything. Yeah. We've done, um, we've done a, some unique characters where we imagined what the character would look like from a book. Um, there's a local artist, uh, Emily B. Martin that has done, um, some, she's done some stuff with the library and she's got a series of books out and she's also an artist. So she draws her characters, and so we I've made a costume of one of her characters, so off her drawings. Um, we've done ones like, like I said, the, we did some off of uh, Percy, the kids did some Percy Jackson for a while. Um, so yeah, it can be any anything, and sometimes we make absolute complete fantasy characters. We've done, you know, uh, unicorns and, a, you know, a, a, a fawn character. Like we'll pull from any source that we have and from our imagination as well. How much time does it take to pull these together? <laughs> you're, what you're talking about, it sounds like a lot of stuff. It is a lot of work, yeah. Um, it, it depends. So that's one question I get a lot. It's like, how long does a costume take? It varies dramatically. Um, sometimes we can whip out a costume in a day or two, and other times we're talking six weeks. So it just depends on the complexity and how much hand tooling there is or, you know, um, detailing work and things like that. So sometimes we're, you know, hand sewing, beading on an entire dress, um, and that'll take obviously a lot longer than, you know, if you're doing something a little simpler. Do you like the complicated ones? Um, it depends on when you ask me. <laughs> so there's times, in theory, yes. When you're in the midst of it, you're like, I hate everything about this. No, so uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, there's an emotional roller coaster ride you go when you're creating. So, and you talked about this a minute ago a little bit. Talk about the places y'all go and do, and what y'all do with your White Knight cosplay group. And where would the name come from? Um, that was my maiden name was was Knights, and uh, like I said, when I started cosplay, it was kind of I kind of needed it for you know some emotional you know improvement, um, and so I needed to be my own white knight, and so that just kind of is how it started. Um, so we yeah we've done we've gotten to do some really amazing things. Um, I get to be a guest speaker at some of the local conventions, um, and I do a lot of teaching. So I, I teach at the library and museum and some other locations. Um, so I get to share the love of cosplay, and, and I've actually made some incredible friends. Like some of my closest friends came to my first class, you know, and we just bonded. And you know, years later we're doing this all together. Um, obviously, we started the superhero group, and we've gotten to do a lot with that. You know, we've been at Shriners, and um, we do a lot of charity work and helping support the local community businesses. Um, so that's been really exciting. Um, we've How gotten do kids to, in the hospitals and stuff respond to you guys. They love it. Like it's 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 really it's really interesting. Um, so we've done a lot of different different kind of things. Like we've gotten to work with some uh, in some group homes and things like that. Um, and we've done a lot of education. We have a, a four-step training for how to be your own superhero. And so we teach the kids some basics of um, just character qualities, you know, uh, how to be a good character um, to be a superhero. And it's the same stuff mom and dad teach. Um, but when you hear it from Batman, it's just a little different. And the kids are like, well, Batman said. You know, my mom's like, I've been telling you that for years. But, but Batman said. Um, so they respond, you know, there's a, an awe to it a little bit. And I think sometimes that gives us a little more power in, in what we get to teach and get, get to share. Which is, uh, which is, that's part of the exciting part is that we have a little bit, you know, there's, um, there's a responsibility with the characters we take on. What's next? What would you like to do that you haven't done so far? Oh, that's right. I'd like, well, one thing I'd like to do is I'd like to do a lot more with our charity, charity work. Like I'd like to see that expand even more and get a wider reach for that. Um, I, you know, I, that's what <laughs> I'm going to have to think about that question. Um, just more, uh, it, you know, challenging myself with new skills. Um, I'd like to work with, you know, get some more work with metal. I've got some cool design ideas that I'd like to incorporate some metal that I haven't done a lot with before. Um, 
yeah, and, and I just, I kind of roll with what comes down the pipeline, so you know, I never really know what's next. <laughs> Are there characters you'd like to do that you haven't done? Yeah, um, I have an original character I'd really like to design at some point uh, that involves some very dramatic wings. I've done some wing work, but this would be an articulating mechanical uh, wing structure that would be really challenging. Um, so I'd love to do this, this you, you know, an original character that's um, that's becoming a dragon. So it would be, you know, a lot of, you know, dramatic spine, you know, spinal column kind of uh, sculpting and, you know, some things like that. So that's in my head, but we'll see where that goes. <laughs> and at what point are you going to run out of space? I already have. <laughs> so we have another room uh, that we keep all the costumes in. So otherwise this would be a very clustered room. Um, then we have, uh, and again, with the entertainment company, we've, we've established a space for that. And so um, all those are in there. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're rapidly running out of space. So I'll probably need to get a storage unit at some point for more of it. <laughs> and I have a really, I sell some of my costumes, um, but I, I get like separation anxiety with my creations. They're like my children, you know? So I'm like, don't leave yet. Um, so I, I don't separate with them as well as I probably should, <laughs> but I could have more space if, you know, um, uh, yeah. And I think my poor husband has had to give up a lot of closet space and things like that. So how about as your kids grow older, do you think they'll keep doing this when they, that's a good question. Um, I think they, pro I mean, they seem to really enjoy what they do. Um, so I, I hope so. I hope they, or I, th I think my greatest wish is that not necessarily that they do the costuming or they continue with this, this um, cosplay, but that they take the, the, the lessons that they've gained from it. You know, they are, they're very confident children. They have no problem being in front of people. Um, they are good speakers. They are compassionate. And I think those are what I really care that they carry on. So whether they ever dress in costume again is, doesn't matter to me that they've, they've built their character through it, I think is really important. And other than just getting out to more places, anything else White Knight Cosplay wants to do that you are in your pipeline now? Um, I would love to do a lot more education. So I, I would love to get out there and, um, you know, teach and share more of this because I think it's I think it's a really valuable skill. Um, and I think that there's a, a population of kids that, and I joke around that, you know, because you know, I work in drama and I, you know, all this kind of interconnects. And I always joke that we're the island of the misfit kids. So some of us just don't fit in other places and cosplay gives a really good space um, to do that. Uh, so I'd love to reach more people and, and have opportunities to do a lot more education um, and connect with you know teenagers that may just not feel like they have a space, you know, that they that they connect and they fit in and find those connections. So that would be that would be, probably be what I'd like to expand on a lot more. And where can people find out more about it? If they hear this and think, oh, you're going to be doing more things, where can we find out about what you're doing? And... Um, on my social media. So I'm on Instagram and uh, Facebook under White Knight Cosplay. Um, so usually I try to post what I'm doing, what's coming up next. Um, and people, I, I love when people reach out and ask questions. So I'm, I encourage that where people can come and uh, say, oh, you know, I'm working on this costume. I'm not sure what to do next. Message me. I, I really enjoy doing that. So um, I like to, to get to mentor and, and guide. And so I'm never bothered by those questions. Through cosplay um, and doing costume design and learning to like self pattern and, and, you know, grow in my own. So I started eventually like you follow a pattern and now I've got to the point where I can create my own patterns and, and do it from scratch. Um, and that actually oddly evolved into fashion design. And so I've gotten to do some fashion shows as a designer. Um, that's actually one of my pieces back there um, from a show or from, um, I work with a lot of photographers and we do, you know, specialty shoots and things like that. And that's from one of them. Um, but I would actually entered the Color Me Goodwill um, fashion show last year and won, which was pretty exciting. And that's a, and that's kind of, that one I really like because it's promoting the job, um, the job training with Goodwill. And it's a neat, it's a, it's a really cool challenge because you have, you're given a signature color and you have a $200 gift card to Goodwill and you have to get all your materials for your five designs out of Goodwill. So you have to, you know, find, and it has to be like 80% of that color. So it's a, it's a huge challenge. It was much harder than I thought it was gonna be. Um, and you have to create these unique designs by, you know, de you know, taking apart other costumes or using, you know, unique materials to create a costume. So that was kind of a neat experience, but that all stemmed out of the cosplay world. It just kind of another evolution of what, what I do. So, so you never know what door is, something's going to open. But. So you're, you wanted to get a little busier is what you're saying. I do like being busy. <laughs> I like challenges and I like new, you know, you new, exciting, and they all, it all kind of interconnects. So it's not like I have like all these separate, you know, components. So I come up here and I might be doing a fashion design thing. I might be making a costume. I might be, you know, planning the next entertainment gig we're doing. So but it all kind of, you know, it weaves itself together nice and neatly for me.